Hi there, just read this disclaimer please. Hi there guys. So you'll be uh, you'll be absolutely shocked to hear that I've got another spreadsheet for you. Um, I had a question in a comment again. It was about whether to take the lump sum or well how much of a lump sum to take from the final their final benefit oh defined benefit got the wrong words uh, pension that, were, that was on offer um, I won't use the numbers specifically given in the question I'll just I'll just use what I found on this website which so how is a pension lump sum calculated for the final salary pension so what they've said here is it's basically um, a public sector pension normally has a commission factor of 12 so the NHS. Uh, this is actually relevant to a, a family member of mine, actually uh, a sibling of mine. So it's a good thing to look into because I know in a few years' time I'm going to be asked about this anyway. Um, so basically, the the options. Here's a standard example they've given anyway. So they've said the final defined benefit pension is twenty is offered as twenty grand a year. That is, I think that's relate. That is linked to RPI, uh, measure of inflation. Um, but but in the example they've given, there is an option to take up to eighty five thousand seven hundred and fourteen pounds as a lump sum, uh, and that maximum would reduce the the pension to twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty seven a year, linked to RPI. So what I thought, what I've done is I've created a spreadsheet that kind of compares the two scenarios really and I've uh, sort of done as, as best I can to project the kind of how the numbers would work out in both scenarios given different parameters that you enter in green so as you can see here I've entered these are the numbers you enter right, in scenario one you get zero cash lump sum in scenario two you get 85 grand odd as a lump sum uh, in scenario one there's 20 grand a year being paid that rises by RPI. I've, I've put a random estimate of one one and a half percent in for RPI. God knows if it's real. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of cancelled out. It kind of it kind of doesn't really matter because I've I've put your spending rises by the same amount. So really, whatever RPI is, it doesn't matter that much. Well, only in terms of the investment returns. The real investment returns are affected by it because obviously if if you return six percent and prices have gone up by one point five percent, you've only really made four and a half percent, haven't you? Because the buying power of the money you've invested has gone down. But on the other hand, if all of the prices of goods and services go up, surely all of the companies you own as investments are getting more revenue. So does that kind of equal itself out? Does it kind of if there's price rises, you own the companies that are getting paid those price rises, so I don't know, I think it kind of, it could kind of make sense depending on what sort of investments you have. Uh, and then I've also, what I've also done here is I've accounted for income tax of 20%. I haven't made the formulas compl complex enough to go above the basic rate of interest uh, of uh, income tax. So you have to take that, I've, I've written all, it's all in the notes here, so if, if you look at these different notes, I've kind of put in some disclaimers there. One of them is that it, it only calculates for um, basic rate in, um, income tax. So as you can see here, it just kind of it takes off the the allowance of twelve and a half grand, and then calculates how much it, how much income tax you'd pay, and takes it off. Um, but it increases that allowance by one and a half percent. Again, that's just a complete guess. You've got to guess something, haven't you? You can't get it. You can't be a hundred percent right with projections. And then I've put in here how much you want to spend each year. Um, that has so if we just go for eighteen thousand five hundred in there, eighteen thousand five hundred. We can see how much of a difference it makes because eighteen thousand five hundred is how much you'd get paid in the first year. So with with taking the full the full yearly payment and no lump sum. It all works out perfectly, as you can see, and it works out perfectly because we've got spending at 1.5% increases, and we've got the defined benefit pension rising by 1.5% as well. I wouldn't use that number. I'd give yourself at least a bit of leeway. 
Let's try that. Leave you leave uh, leave some money to your descendants, maybe. But anyway, the, the point isn't the exact numbers I'm putting in. The point is, here's a spreadsheet. Use it if you want, and you can put your own numbers in. Um, but as you can see, here, here it plots. Um, it's it's plotting the portfolio value. So in the in the years, well, if we go up fully, eighteen thousand five hundred. There's nothing, there's no excess, you're spending every penny. So, you, so this add withdraw thing either adds to your portfolio or, or takes away from it. Because as, as you can see here, it's taking away from the portfolio that starts at this value, matches that, and it's taking away from the portfolio. It's adding 6% to it there, but then subtracting how, the excess spend. So the, the net income he's in pension 2 is lower. So to spend 18 grand, you need to withdraw 5,214 from the portfolio to have an equal, you know, to make the comparison um, exact. And there we go, it is exact there now. Um, so yeah, in this very simple example, where you spend every penny that you get here, it's obviously a flat line for pension one in blue, and then you just slowly reduce, um, sort of eating away at your capital in pension two. But even in this kind of, even in this kind of uh, worst case scenario for pension two, we're giving pension two a hard time here. Even in that example, it takes 27 years before your net worth is lower on pension two. So I guess part of the equation might be what's your health like when you retire. If you think you've got zero chance of getting close to 27 years of retirement before you die then you might be better off even in these really bad circumstances because what they've done here it's um, something called a commution factor is what it's called of 12 now I think an, a simple, an easier way of doing it of kind of thinking about that number is do 1 divided by 12 you get 8.33 percent basically that's that is the kind of yield it's not strictly not strictly the same, but it's kind of the yield on eighty five thousand seven hundred and fourteen that gives you multiplied by eighty five seven one four seven one four two is a twelfth of eighty five thousand seven hundred and fourteen. So if you if you add that to twelve eight seven five, sorry eight five seven, you get twenty grand. So the one divided by the twelve is kind of like if you multiply by a hundred to make it a percentage eight point three percent is kind of like the returns you need to make to get the same income as you would in the pension one so what we've assumed here is is six percent so to get To get the numbers 8.33 being an absolute home run for for pension, the scenario two where you take the lump sum, you have to be somewhere around 8.33. Well, it's hard to say because actually 8.2, 8.2, because actually in in scenario in pension one you never actually. Let's go down. It doesn't work when pension one doesn't have any excess money to invest. There we go. So we're investing some money now in pension one, and the lines kind of go together now. But pension two is always higher because it's such a low amount of money. So if we go down to eight point one, maybe see the lines start getting closer and closer, don't they? As the returns go lower. Um, but because you don't get a lump sum in pension one. The lines are never kind of parallel. They always, they have to meet at some point. Seven point eight, seven point eight. Ah, uh, there we go. They're starting to cross over now within our time frame. This is kind of guesswork. I, I maybe if I was at peak mental capacity, like when I was age eighteen doing an A level in maths, I might be able to think this through more fully. But what I think might happen is eight point three three percent might. Not 100% sure, be like the cutoff point of where the red line always stays above the blue line, so pension 2 is always better off. 
even if you went to infinity so I've gone up to 300 and I think it's 400 years I've gone up to here in the chart I've just expanded the spreadsheet and as you can see even at 8% eventually the blue line goes above the red line so pension 2 wins out eventually but you know in you know for all for our purposes it doesn't really matter because who's, who's going to live much more than 50 years after retirement who knows um, but then I think what I think what might happen is if we creep towards 8.33 so 8.2, um, you can just about see there that the red line is above still. But um, it doesn't take much imagination to think that, oh, maybe maybe if we went out to 1,000 or 2,000 years, maybe the blue line would go above it. But then I think when you get to 8.33, 8.33, we get to a point there where maybe, it's all guesswork really, but you can probably think perhaps, oh, I don't know, maybe that red line will just go further and further away from the blue line and perhaps the blue line would never go above it, even if you went out to a million years. Um, that's my theory anyway. I don't know, is there any mathematicians out there who can shed more light on this? I don't know. 5% is a comfortable number, I think, to expect from your investments. Even then it's, what, 23 years? See, the, the years have gone lower because I've given yourself, I've given you 50 quid to invest in Pension One's example. But anyway, so you can put in your own numbers. Obviously, the, sometimes, sometimes you get offered, you might get offered two different numbers, two different lump sum amount. This little article actually says that um, the commission factor of 12 is typical for public sector, but in private sector schemes, you're more likely, li more likely to have a higher commission factor of 14 or 15 so if you go 1 divided by 15 it's becoming a much lower investment return you need to get this chart favoring pension 2 for longer you know if, to, if it goes 50 years favoring pension 2 then maybe you're better off having the lump sum but then on the other hand some people just don't want to invest at all so they might end up with some ridiculous thing like that for just putting it in a savings account. In which case, it's very rare that Pension 2 is going to work out better. Oh, well, I mean, unless you were terminally, terminally ill and you want to leave as much of a lump sum to your children as possible, maybe even this scenario is worth going for Pension 2. Okay, now, I mean, another thing that this, I suppose this spreadsheet could be used for is... Um, I don't, I'm not sure that it happens with final benefit salaries, but I know that annuities come in multiple forms, and one form is that the fixed rate one, so that you get a set amount each year, and it doesn't change every year, so basically you're losing money to inflation that way, but obviously the amount it starts off at would be higher to compensate for it. So I'm guessing this spreadsheet could be used to compare those, so let's, I mean I have no idea what kind of realistic numbers are, but Let's pretend that the first option is 18,000 that rises by 1.5% RPI. Let's just guess RPI is 1.5%. And then the second choice could be, well, let's just leave it 20,000. 20,000, but doesn't rise at all. So I guess this spreadsheet could be used to analyse that sort of scenario. Um, obviously, I've messed this up, though, haven't I? Because the spending there is too high, so we need to adjust that. So let's go for 16,900. Uh, 16,900. So obviously there it lasts. Um, how long does it last? It lasts for 16 years before pension one is better off. Um, so I don't know. Maybe these numbers are unrealistic. Who knows? Try 2,000. So 22 grand compared to 18 grand, and we're lasting about 30 years. A bit longer. Um, I tell you what, let's let's look up some annuity rates online. Put some realistic numbers in. Not very high, are they? I think these rates are for a hundred grand. I think, yeah, hundred grand. Hundred grand buys you this amount. I'll go for the age fifty-five comparison. So we've got there. Oh, I don't know what the guarantee means. See, stuff like that makes me worry. This is why I prefer to have control of my own money. It, why does it need a guarantee? People think of annuities as like something that's rock solid and safer than having your own investment portfolio. But when it when it needs a guarantee, that makes me wonder. I mean, I don't know a lot about annuities, so I'm, I could be talking complete rubbish here. But these two lines are exactly the same except for RPI and level. 
burden of tax here. So actually to make these slightly realistic numbers, we need to multiply them by a factor each, don't we, to make, so let's say, so four, eight, let's multiply them by four to get somewhat realistic numbers. Yeah, lower amount rises by 1.5. Uh, we spend 6928. 6928. And there we have it. Well, in, in this example, it seems pretty uh, cut and dry, doesn't it? It's just so low. Obviously, your, your um, balance stays at zero because I've set the spend to be exactly the same as the RPI-linked one. Uh, but I guess, uh, I don't know, if we set the numbers lower, if we just spend six grand a year, get something, we, we at least see something on the graph there. And the, the person getting the RPI linked one is investing a little bit of money. As you can see, it just, yeah, pension one wins by so much. That this number would have to get so much lower or so much higher. The RPI one needs to really go. So if it goes 50% higher, yeah, you see, you see there's a curve there in the plot. And actually, after, well, it still takes over 50 years though. So even if the RPI linked one was... 50% higher, it'd take over 50 years before you're better off. Um, oh man, and that's only investment return to 2% as well, I didn't notice that. I did not notice that I'd still got it at low returns. Right, see, with higher investment returns, Pension 2 is never going to win by the looks of it. Even with 50% higher than these rates here. Yeah, it's really... Yeah, okay. So you're best off going for the for the level one, man. Yeah, well, to be honest, I wouldn't touch an annuity with a barge pole. They are. I mean, you can see that's three point eight percent. Three point eight percent that pays on a hundred grand. That's three. Yeah, three point eight percent yield. City of London yields over four percent and rises by probably above RPI. It's a. I mean, by taking what is considered here no risk, you're losing a lot. Even with the good scenario here, pension one. But pension two is awful. Because I have, yeah, yeah, it's really bad. Anyway, but that's, a, that's another thing you could use this spreadsheet for, I think, if you wanted to. But to be honest, I, would, I just wouldn't use annuities at all. But this is not investment advice. Ignore me. As you can see, I'm an awful investor. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Let's just go through the red notes I've made here. Only works, yeah, so if I've said that already, it only works for basic rate taxpayers. If you want to go to the effort and modify this cell so that it calculates it for higher rate taxpayers, that's up to you. Obviously the allowances change. At the moment I'm assuming 12 point, twelve and a half grand tax-free allowance. Obviously that changes each year, so perhaps at some point you might have to pop into these, this cell here and change the 12,500 and then copy it down all the way down and obviously the same for that for that um, column as well uh, it, oh yeah this is a very important point this assumes that withdrawals from the um, port from the uh, investment portfolio are tax-free which isn't that likely I mean it I mean just for simplicity I've haven't I've done that for simplicity because there's all sorts of different scenarios um, I mean this would only take 85 grams so that, that would take, what, four years to get all in an ISA. You'd also have, I think, two grand worth of dividends allowance before you have to pay tax on dividends. You get to about 12 grand or a bit more capital gains tax as well. So it was hard to put assumptions in there that made sense. So for now, I've just put zero with a disclaimer. So you can adjust it to... I mean, I mean another thing is you might... If you wanted to invest all in growth stuff that didn't pay dividends, you'd have a bigger chance of not having to pay any tax because you've got a big um, capital gains tax allowance. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.